family-friendly soups to share with you, meals that even my picky eaters will eat. On those days where mama is just tired and has no more energy to cook or serve anyone else. Hey guys, welcome to this week's video, which is going to be all about soups. So as you can see, I brought up my large soup pot or stock pot from the basement. I don't store this in the kitchen all the time. And I have a mountain of canned tomatoes right here because we are going to start off today making chili. Now, in case you're new around here, hi, my name is Sarah and I am a homeschool mama to five kiddos. I have a four year old all the way on up into a 16 year old. So yes, with teens in the house, we go through a lot of food. I, I have to make very large quantities of food. So that being said, freezer meals, large quantities of healthy food ready to go that I can just take out of the freezer, warm up in a pot and serve to my family on those busy homeschool days, on those days where mama is just tired and has no more energy to cook or serve anyone else. These, these are my go-to. So I'm going to start out with chili, but then I have several other family-friendly soups to share with you, meals that even my picky eaters will eat. So let's just jump right in, big pot of chili. So of course, first ingredient that I go to get onions, I'm running low on in my pantry. This just goes to show these recipes are very flexible. If you don't have a white onion, you can substitute a red or purple, whatever you like to call these. You could use onion powder, you could use onion flakes, you could use whatever you want. Now, the one thing I will say in order to make this kid friendly, be sure, just a little tip, chop your vegetables as tiny as tiny as humanly possible. It makes a huge difference if they don't see a big clump of onions or peppers in their spoon. The smaller it is, the less likely they are to nitpick at it. So just saying, take the extra time to chop everything very fine. This is very lean ground beef. It's actually from um, a side of beef that we bought from my brother. He, he raises them and it's wonderful. And so I was actually able to request really lean beef, which was nice. So you can drain this if you want, or if you like having a little bit of extra fat in there, you can leave it. It's really up to you. I tend to drain just a little bit, but not all of it. Now, obviously cooking this beef in this really large pot this way, I am not really browning it because it, there's so much, it's just kind of steaming and cooking it. If I wanted it to be browned, I would probably do it in like my cast iron skillet um, and do it in batches one pound at a time. That would definitely add an extra layer of flavor. If I was doing just a small batch, that's probably what I would prefer. But since I'm doing this recipe times four, I'm just, I'm just happy to get it all cooked through. All right, so now it is time to add seasonings. This is where you can get very, very creative with this recipe. Uh, I tend to use very basic seasonings, uh, just very predictable uh, chili powder, cumin, onion powder, salt and pepper, a little bit of cayenne. I'll list all of this in the recipe down below. You can, if you wanna give this more of a Mexican flair, you could add a lot more cumin and add in some corn and black beans. You could make it very Italian and do basil and oregano. There's a lot of variations, which is one of the reasons I love to make chili. I mean, there's a reason it's a staple in the Midwest. So. I'm just gonna go very basic. I'll list everything down below, but you know, go nuts.
you can probably tell by the darkness outside and the lighting in here, it is now four hours later and my time four batch of chili is complete. I let it simmer on the stove all afternoon. I ran the little ones over to the library. We hung out there for a while and came home and the house just smells amazing. I have two large pots here for two separate get togethers we're gonna be having and then I have enough left over in this giant pot to probably put three gallon size bags in the freezer for meals later on this fall and into the winter for us. So quite the productive day. I am beat and I have a mound of dishes to do now. So. <laughs> So this next one is an instant pot meal, but you could do this on the stove top as well. To get things started, I'm just cooking up some chicken in my instant pot with broth and just basic herbs and seasonings. You could sub this in for rotisserie chicken or canned chicken if you want to skip this step. Next, I'm gonna scrub up some potatoes. These are actually potatoes I grew in the garden myself. So they're a little bit smaller than what I would usually use, but I'm, I'm very proud of these babies. So I'm gonna chop these up and put them on the stove in some salted water. just doing a quick release on my instant pot just the chicken is done cooking and so I am going to take it out and put it in a bowl on the side just to save it for later in the recipe I will use my favorite kitchen scissors to chop this up into bite-sized pieces I, I like the texture of chunked chicken rather than shredded for soups Now I'm going to start on the gravy for this soup. It's just a very simple roux where I'm going to put some butter on the stove with some chopped onion and let that cook for a little while. I would normally add celery to this recipe, but I was out this day, so I just substituted celery seed instead. As you can see, I'm adding in flour to make my roux and let that cook for just a minute until the flour taste is out. And then I'm adding in a uh, cream, cream and some of my reserved chicken broth from my Instant Pot from when I cooked the chicken. That is just going to make this gravy delicious and it's gonna be a wonderful addition for the soup. I moved my Instant Pot over and I plugged it back in and turned it on saute mode just to get the broth that I have left over in there heating up again. To this, I'm gonna add these awesome chicken pot pie noodles that I got from Amish Country. To add back in my chunked chicken here. And then I have a big old bowl full of frozen veggies here, just the organic ones that I buy from Costco a couple cups of veggies, and then those potatoes that I boiled. I'm adding in a little bit extra chicken broth. As you can see with the gravy and everything added in here, this soup is very, very thick. So you may want to add extra broth to get it to the desired consistency that you're looking for.
Okay, so this tortellini soup recipe is very self-explanatory, but I did wanna hop on here real quick. If you are planning to freeze this, stop here. Do not add your tortellini or any of the rest of the ingredients here. You want to wait and save those after you thaw it out and are ready to reheat it. So I add my tortellini, my kale, cream, cheese, all of these things I'm gonna, you're gonna see me add in here. Wait and put those in when you are reheating this recipe. It will just make for a much better freezer meal in the long run. When I have frozen tortellini in the soup uh, with the cream and the cheese, the tortellini just kind of absorbed all of the liquids. It got very, very thick and the tortellini just kind of fell apart. But I will say overall, this was one of my kids' favorite soups of the week. just love this hand pulled rotisserie chicken. I did not know this was a thing, but it is such a time saver when you're making recipes like this. As I said in my last recipe for the tortellini soup, if you are putting this straight in the freezer, wait to add your noodles until after you thaw this soup out. Otherwise they will just absorb all of the liquid.